Okay, this video today is going to be pretty much centered around how to prepare the spinner um, for 3D printing. You all will have designed your spinner as a solid and um, that would be okay. But in industry, things are normally made out of two halves and then joined together. Um, if we were to 3D print these spinners as solids, the problem would be printing time because it takes quite a long time to print uh, a solid object. Um, and that would be the main thing, printing time would just take too long. So what we need to do is we need to think about um, as if we're making this for in, uh, an industry, uh, what it would look like. So I'll show you what the plan is to do, then I'll demonstrate how to do it. So let me just hide the bits we're not going to talk about today. So hide the bearing, hide that, and hide that. And you'll notice that my spinner is two colours because I've, uh, it's, in, it's been split into two halves. Um, I've got a spinner bottom, a spinner top. Okay, so let's hide that one. And you can see when I hide it, what I have now is I have some detail on the inside. So I've shelled out the inside, so I've got rid of all this material, this excess material would have been along the top. And I've also added some location points here and here. And the idea is that um, the top one, so hide the bottom one, or shell that one, the top one would then simply just locate into it. Um, and 3D printers are pretty accurate. Um, this would most probably be a push fit. Um, we may not need any glue. So what we could do, we could, if you need a glue, you could just put a little bit of glue around here and then fix it together. And that means you've got two parts then that you would, would print. When you would print it as well, you would print it like this, okay? Uh, and the printer would go along and build up the layers. Um, and also what we need to think about is the 3D printer um, doesn't really like, to, it, it doesn't like overhangs. So if you've got a real um, sharp fillet on here, I've reduced mine, that wouldn't print very well. It, ha it can print supports, but again, that takes time. So we'll also talk about reducing the fillet, maybe just to one millimeter, so it prints uh, decent because you don't really want it because it's got to print that way um, you could print it that way but it's got to build a lot of support underneath um, to get all these features in so it's probably better to print with the, the larger flatter surface area facing down like that um, and then it'll just build it in layers going across so let's get started let's talk about how we're going to do this with your with your existing drawing. Now the great thing with Onshape is you can edit things. So what I would suggest you do first um, before you get started is just create a copy um, of your drawing just in case anything goes wrong you've always got a spare. So to do that you just find your original drawing okay and what you can do is you can right click on it and you can just go to um, copy workspace. Then you just change the name, you can like spinner version 2 and then just say OK and what will happen is you'll have a, um, a duplicate will appear um, in your folder tree here. So I've created one already there, that's one I've just shown you. So let's go into it and let's start the process. So what we're going to do first is we're going to just hide the things we don't need. So we don't need the bearing, we don't need the cap, we don't need that. Okay, they're all the separate parts. We're also going to bring back one of the work planes as well. So we're going to bring back the um, top work plane like that. And if we look at it from the front, we can see it's sat on the work plane. Now what we need to do is I know that this was eight millimeters in the extrude depth. Um, what we need to do is we need to bring this work plane through the center of the spinner. So to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to create an offset work plane. And all an offset work plane is, is just creating another work plane that's offset by a set distance. So to do that, we just right click and we just go to offset plane. And we can set what distance. So at the moment it defaults to 25 millimeters. So you can see that it's put it 25 millimeters above. 
Um, what I can do there is I can just type in four. And what will that do is that will then put it through the middle. So I think most of you should have done eight millimeters as your extrude. So four would be to the middle. Then what I'm going to do, just to keep the drawing nice and tidy, I'm just going to hide the top work plane like that. I'm just going to go to the front view. And I can see now that that splits right through the middle. OK. So the first job is to split in half. And that's pretty easy to do in Onshape. What we do is we go to our uh, tools menu. Just get this in the window so we can see. And along the top here, we have a tool called Split. And all you do is you click it, and it's saying, what parts do you want to uh, split? So I want to split this part. OK, and then it says Entity to Split With. So what do you want to use as your splitting tool? So I click that, then I select this plane. OK, and what will happen is you've looked in the parts, all of a sudden now we have two more parts. Because what's happened is the work plane has been used to slice that part in half. Notice I click OK. So now I can hide that one. Or hide that one. And again, to make things easy, what I would do is I would rename them. So that's the bottom one. So right click, uh, rename, call it spinner bottom. Okay, and then that one. And also, what I would do is also change the color. Um, just so you can see the difference. Let's go for yellow, yellow and red. Okay, have I named that the bottom one? The top one? Yes, I have. <laughs> so let me rename that to spinner top. Okay. Spinner top. Let's click. Okay. Right. So we're going to work on the bottom one first, and then I'm going to work on the top one. So let's hide the top one. We don't need this work plane anymore. So we can go look for plane one, we can hide that. And now we've got a nice clean space to work on this one. So again, we're going to use another tool up here um, called the shell tool, uh, which is this one, which allows you to shell any solid object by defining the wall thickness. So I click that and I'm just going to click onto here and you can see that it automatically shells it. Now I want to reduce as much material as possible. So I'm going to change that to two millimeters. I wouldn't want a wall thickness um, that's two millimeters. Okay, that's quite thin. I wouldn't want to go, wouldn't want to go down to like 1.5 or one millimeter. I just think it might be a bit too thin. So it's dropped it down by two and that by two, which means now that distance there is two. Okay, so it's total of four down by two. Um, so that's that part done. Easy as that. Next, what we're going to do is we need to draw those little plugs, the location plugs. So again, that's pretty straightforward to do. Nothing new here. So I'm just going to first go, I want to sketch on this base. Okay. Now on this base up here, I want to select on this, this lower part. Then I'm just going to change my view to the top view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find an area where there's quite a bit of space. Like here looks good. Uh, don't, have to, don't we have to be too precise? I'm just going to get my center point circle. And I'm going to draw around about here. And I think I'm going to draw it like about a six. So I'll do that, type in six, press enter. And what you can do, you can, if you want, you can move it into where you feel is a decent spot. You can eye it up, looks about right there. And then I'm going to do another one at four. Okay, so that would give me also a two millimeter difference, which matches the rest of it. Okay, so four and six. Now, I could go around and try and draw them in the same place, but that's too much like hard work. We don't like hard work. We like to make life easy for ourselves. So all we do is we use the rotate tool, which again, you've used before in this project. So you can see how much repetition you, happens when you're using CAD, but it's just thinking about how can I draw this part easier um, than trying to make it hard work for myself. So circular pattern, I'm going to click on there and click on there. And there we go, it pops them in the right place 
for me because this has been rotated before. And then that's OK. So I've got those done. OK, now all I need to do is just do a simple extrude up to this next face here. So again, we're going to click that. I'm going to click all of it. I'm going to click all of it. I'm going to click all of it like that. But when I do it, I need to make sure it says add. And what I can do, rather than me trying to move this arrow down and try and match the surface, where it says blind here, if I just click up to next, it'll take it up to the next face for me. So what it's done, it says, OK, I can see the next face is here. I'll move it up to there. And again, a nice little trick, just so you don't have to try and eye things up. So that's done perfectly. So that's that piece ready. OK, that's that piece done. Um, so what we need to do now, we need to draw our attention to the other side. So to do that, we're just going to hide that one and bring that one back up. Um, and then we're just going to flip it around so we can work with it. And we're going to repeat the process. So again, get your shell tool, shell, and going to click that. Before it was two millimeters. Enter. OK, that's shelled that out nicely. Now it's the case of where were those holes? That's the tricky thing. But it's not, because what we can do is we can, we can bring back the sketch we used from the previous drawing. OK, so here we go. We have the sketches. Um, but the problem is they're on a previous drawing. Now, what we can do is a really clever little um, feature on on shape um, is we're going to just say right I'm going to, I want to sketch like we did before on this lower face okay everything's the same as before these sketches are still here but if I was ex if I wanted to extrude that it would come up it wouldn't actually touch this face so what we can do is there's this real nice feature called project geometry and that is there and what it does is I can use drawings from previous sketches and I can project them onto my new sketch. So if I click that, if I click that, it draws it for me on that face. So again, click, click, OK, click, and then click. So that has now projected that previous drawing onto that face which is a real nice feature because you know that things are going to line up. What I can do now is we can hide that sketch. Now we have our geometry um, from the previous sketch. So what we do now is we're do the, um, we're going to finish the sketch. Okay, the drawings are there. We're going to get the extrude like that. And we're going to extrude the center points first. OK, that one. That one. OK, and then that one. So if I extrude it by two, it would come to the top here. But what I want it to do, I want it to locate inside the other one by two millimeters, which is the depth of the hole. So what I will do is I'll put four millimeters here. And I know that that will then, OK, extrude above the surface by two millimetres. You can see that there. Now what we need to do, oh, we need to think, OK, well, that, that sketch has disappeared. I need that. So you can bring that back. And what you can do is bring up the other parts of it. So like that, uh, like that, and like that. And then as we did before with the other one, we go up to net, up to face. No, done that wrong, sorry. Um, up to next, maybe. There we go. So up to next. And then that'll bring you up to that, that face there. And you can see that that is correct. Just double check. Let's hide this sketch, because I see this sketch here. Let's hide that. OK, let's have a quick look from the, the um, no. yeah. So you can see that these little points are raised up from the surface. If I bring in the other part, you can see that. 
And what I can do as well is if I right click here and I go to make transparent, you can see how it locates in. So you can see that they are locating into the places where we've designed to go. Like that. So next little step. Um, let's just go back to normal view again. Um, how do I get that back? Uh, exit rate on phone. Okay. So I did say earlier that this may be a bit too much of an extreme um, chamfer for the three D printer to print. And again, with with on shape, it's a really easy, quick fix. You can just find that chamfer, not that one. Go back in your history tree. Um, where is it now? Extrude. Fill it. Okay, it was a fill it, not a chamfer. I'm just going to edit. I'm just going to knock that down to maybe like 0 0.5. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, it's just reduced it down. It's made it a little bit sharper, but I know that, that would print a lot better than the previous one. Um, and then we can just double check. Let's put everything back in place. Okay, there we go. Everything is good to go. We've got everything done. We've got our split part. Um, and we know that it all fits together nicely. And what you've done there is you've actually designed something that would be commercially viable as a product as well.